Hi friends, welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Brooklyn and I post videos every week on thrifting, styling, and DIY. This week, I am so excited because we are decorating the living room for Halloween. I have a gallery wall behind the couch that's mostly thrifted art and a couple of personal pictures. So I wanna keep that because I've put a lot of time into curating and styling the perfect gallery wall. I really like where it's at right now, but I want to Halloweenify it so that it looks a little bit more gothic and spooky. Still a gallery wall, but like spooky gallery wall. Yeah. I thrifted a couple of pieces like these brass sconces. I also DIY'd some things like these bugs. And this is really, really simple. I just got some plastic bugs from the dollar store and spray painted them and created this kind of faux taxidermy entomology thing. So I'm going to incorporate all of that into my already existing gallery wall, make it spooky, add some spider webs, add some bats, and there you go. And then I'm going to do kind of the same thing for my shelves. I'm going to keep some of the pieces that I have on there, but incorporate some spooky things, add some bats, add some spider webs, call it a day. So let's get started. I am so happy with how this turned out. It's so spooky, but still very classy, right? So to me, this kind of looks like maybe a very gothic couple lives here. Maybe we decorate like this all year long. Maybe we haven't dusted in a while. And that's what I'm going for in the living room. I want it to just look very much like a haunted house. Also, let me just point out that before I put all of these bats up, it did not look quite so put together. So if you haven't seen my last video where we made bats, go back and watch them, make a hundred bats. I'm telling you, if it's the only thing that you do, it will make everything come together and look so Halloween. It's all you really need to do. Now we are going to turn around and move on to the other wall, which is where the TV is, which is going to be a bit of a challenge because I can't really do anything about that. Also, I, we have a lot of books, so <laughs> I can't really hide my books and I don't wanna cover them. So last year what I did was turn them all around so that it was more of a neutral palette. I might do that again, but then it's like, you can't find your books. So, I don't know, let's see. Let's see, let's go with the flow and see what I do. Scout, you're a star. I made 
made this with some of those dollar store bugs from the kids toy section spray painted them gold got a little base from the craft store drilled some holes for some wooden dowels and then put just a cake cover over them easy easy halloween decor so so spooky a thrifted poetry book. I paid $3.99 for it and I just think it is so perfect for Halloween decor. Because of the way that poetry is formatted, it already looks like some kind of a spell. So I'm going to put this on the shelf open so it looks like a spell book. As you can see, I'm keeping most of my decor that I already had, but I'm turning the books around so it's a little bit more neutral and I'm adding in some, you know, spooky aspects like skulls and some of these entomology projects that I did. I'm also removing anything that's like too colorful or doesn't go within the palette, like this little globe that I just recently thrifted. I'm gonna put this somewhere else for now and then this will go back up after Halloween. <laughs> I think I'm going to pause at this point because I feel like I need a few more Halloween pieces, but I'm going to go ahead and put my bats up, get an overview of where I'm at, and then I will come back to this slowly. Fun to add the bats on top of some of your decor pieces and not just stick them on the wall because then it adds a little bit of dimension and makes them look like they're actually flying around and landing on all your stuff. Okay, I felt like I needed a few more spooky pieces, so I went to Joanne and got this really fine crushed tool in an eggnog color and I'm making little floating ghosts by covering a styrofoam ball with a couple of layers of the tool and then just using a fabric stiffener painted over the top half of the ball. I'm leaving the bottom loose so that they can kind of blow in the wind. Make sure you paint on a pretty thick layer and then let it dry fully in between each layer. I do about two coats of this fabric stiffener and after that I find that it's stiff enough. That's what she said. Once it is completely set, you can very carefully peel everything in one layer off the base and then very gently remove that saran wrap from the inside. I use fishing line to hang these up, so just tie a knot in one end and then thread it through your ghost. And these are so light that you can either tape them to the ceiling or tie them to little hooks if you have them. Here is the final result. I have incorporated a lot of those thrifted porcelain doll heads and my bug decor and I'm actually going to do a very simple DIY with those kombucha bottles. We're going to turn them into potion bottles so be on the lookout for that. I'll do that on Instagram or TikTok. I think these ghosts really added a lot and brought everything together. Thank you so much for watching and decorating with me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay spooky.